We're going to talk about uh, research and reference books, okay? And when you're collecting anything, be it military surplus guns, Zippo lighters, coins, the more you know about something, the better off you are. Knowledge is key. Knowledge gives you strength, okay? And the thing is, how deep you want to go. That's why the other video when I said, what type of collector are you? Um, you got to kind of hone your skills, build your own personal knowledge base, and learn about the hobby and what you're interested in, okay? And make sure that you have the correct information, you have the ability to see if something is correct or modified, so you don't get burned in terms of money, okay? You got to know what you're looking at before you can make a decision whether it's worth it or not basically is what I'm telling you. So what I did is you know um, when I was younger you, you, you had a lot of the gun magazines and stuff and the general things where you get information but you had to teach yourself and you had to learn as you go. Okay. Now granted today we have a lot of online resources Okay, people don't like books, people don't like spending money on books, and yes, good books are going to cost you good money, okay? So, I'll cover the online uh, resources. There's a lot of stuff out there, and, and because a lot of the information on old military guns uh, doesn't have any advertisement or nothing with it, and with Google controlling the search engine, it may be hard to find the pages that some guy that was a collector has pictures and a description and history and details about different models, finer points, you know, collector type information. Not just general collector, in depth, going from one style and type to the other, how to identify a gun, you know, and the details and photographs to back it up. It may be hard to find. Uh, there is a real good site. Uh, I think it's mosinagon.net, and that's where some guys put a lot of work in there, some, some collections and photographs, and guys have written articles and identifications, markings, real good resource, it is online, okay? Some of these resources you may have to pay a yearly fee, okay, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, I'm old, I do it the old-fashioned way. So, you can find a lot of online resources. And another thing, it doesn't matter what resource you're going to, be it online or a printed book, okay? If somebody somewhere made a mistake or something in something they wrote, a lot of these guys are probably going to different books and getting the information to write this book, okay? If there's a mistake or a misconception, that had, could permeate over 50 years. You know, a lot of different things are out there that are kind of fake about guns, like uh, Carcano guns are made out of piss poor quality material. That's not true. Okay, the reason they're kind of lightweight and they look a lot flimsier than, say, a KAR 98 is because it's an older gun. And it also is designed for a cartridge that only generates about 40,000 or 41,000 PSI. So the gun doesn't have to be heavy or huge. It's not a gigantic powered cartridge, okay? So, a lot of misconceptions. But anyway, so let's cover different reference books. <clears throat> and you can get some of these used and uh, new. Now... Reference books will come in different types, um, like a generalized thing. One good one, here's mine. I bought this at a used bookstore. I think this is the 1977 version, and I've had it over 40 years. Small Arms of the World, okay? This is a really interesting book. It had all these military guns broken down by countries. It shows you how to disassemble them. There's machine guns in here, everything. Okay, very good generalized uh, view. It may not cover all the specific models and give you details or photographs of all of them, 
but it is a very good generalized view of military weapons. Okay, this is the 1977 uh, version. The covers off, and I've had this forever. Use this book. What you could do is go and look for the older version. I believe this is the 1957 edition. I bought this used on Amazon, and there is. The front part of the book talks about firearms development and different things, okay, and militaries. And then it goes in again to photographs, examples, disassembling all the guns, okay. Good reference book, good generalized reference, okay. What I mean by that is a lot of knowledge, a lot of general knowledge might not get into real specific things if you're getting into the high-end collecting but if you're a beginner it's a good source to study and you get a lot of information and you learn a lot now i'll bring up another one because several other people have mentioned they have a book like this this is the complete encyclopedia of pistols and revolvers and there are gun or there are books like this about military weapons this just one i uh, i'm using as an example a book like this, very generalized book, okay, and it has all these handguns in it. There are military handguns, there's little descriptions, there's very nice, clear photographs and that of the gun, so you can identify by looking at the pictures, you can figure out different models and makes and what, get a good idea what they look like. Again, very general, very specific. Uh, if you want to learn about different guns, and like I said, you can find these like Encyclopedia of Military Guns, Encyclopedia of Machine Guns. Generalized book helps you like identify it. Okay, but again, generalized information. Now, once we get in to, okay, now I'll go over another book. The reason I am separating these books is I have another one here. This is a different type of book. Okay, this is the Remington Catalog of Firearms. Now, what this is, is if you collected Remington Firearms, it's an outstanding book, because it goes from very early part of the company up to modern times. What this is, is this is a uh, reference book, and it is a price guide. And where the problem is, and the reason the next video I'm going to do is price guides, is if you have a reference book and a price guide together this book was written in 2008 so the prices in this book are off now this is a nice book real nice photographs and like the Remington Museum whatever gives detailed or somewhat detailed information on guns okay especially the older ones more modern guns okay and it gives their value. This this is a well done book. If you want to get a good reference of some Remington weapons, and there's military ones in there, this is the book to get. But problem with this, this is a good guide or example of Remington firearms, but it is tied in with a price guide from 2008, which I believe now in 2020 these prices are not correct. So combining them both into one is not a good idea. It's best to have a catalog of guns, explaining the guns, identifying them, than a separate price guide, which is upgraded every year, two years, to price them to keep it current, because values do change. Okay? So that's another one. You can probably find these on military ones, too. Uh, that's just a specific book. Now, another book which is a reference book, but I highly recommend you should get, okay, and I can't reiterate this enough, is A Collector's Guide to Military Rifle Disassembly, okay? This is like a $40, $45 book, and what this does is if you look in the front, I forget how many different guns has a picture of them. And all these mill surplus guns and a lot of these guns we all love. It shows you how to disassemble them and the bolts. All in this book here. The AK-47s, the grab rifles, all of them. 
and fields. It's all done, done well. And I mean, for the amount of money you spend, as a, as a reference book, there's pictures here and there. This is well worth it. This is a must have because you have to take the guns apart to clean them. And what this will do is this will tell you the correct way. I think it's kind of made by like museum curators. There are some guns that need special tools for disassembly, and this will explain it in there. Instead of waiting for somebody to make a video on YouTube, a bolt disassembly or something, 40 bucks, you got it all, you do it right, okay? And it covers just about anything that you're going to run into collecting military surplus guns. So that's a must have. Okay. Collector's guide, I'll give you, you can get this on Amazon. This is kind of a must have along with like small arms of the world. But get an older one. Don't get a new small arms of the world because it'll be all modern automatic weapons and stuff. You got to get an older one, a used book. Good reference. Now, say you want to get in specifically to a certain type of gun. Now, most of the guns hit the market there all them years ago, and everybody was buying them. You can get reference books. Now, these here depend, and these are like $20, $30 books, okay? And you can get them for the specific rifles. Now, these little small books are pretty good because they're written, they're not that expensive, and they're written in a kind of a generalized thing, but they go into detail with stock markings and uh, different uh, models, and it goes into a lot of them. They show you the markings with the markings for the countries and inspection marks, and they give you exact dimensions of the barrel hardware and everything else so this is very good general guide gets in a little bit more in the detail it tells you exact measurements shows you close-up pictures of variations of barrel bands uh, sights all this other stuff and it shows Mosinagants used by other countries so this is a very good reference book a lot of good information in here I've done several videos covering things and I have reviewed this book now, something like this, and this is again, North Cape Publications. They make a whole series of them. Now, I got the one on Swiss. Now, supposedly this book should only cost about 30 bucks, but I had to pay like over $100, $120 for it because everyone's in the Swiss rifles. This book got in demand, and everybody who sells it jacked the price up over $100. It should be a $35 book. But, again, very useful, covers all the models of both, uh, yeah, this covers Swiss Vetterlies and Swiss Straight Pulls. So, very good book, and that's why they gouge you. You can also get them for like forty-five seventy. covers different models and that, very good book. And 58, 50 caliber center fire rifles, that's another specialized, but... I believe they have them for Mausers and, and they have them for the Enfield and everything else. So you should look around and find a model specific like Lee Enfields, Mauser rifles. They're out there. And then just study up on what you're interested in. Okay. Now, if you really start getting in to stuff and really want to know exact things. I mean, then you have to get into a different class of book. This one here, you know, and it's also more expensive. You know, this this reference library, these books here, you're talking hundreds of dollars to accumulate these books. But this is the best guide on Carcano rifles that I've ever found, even small arms of the world or anything online. This is Relwood well written it has charts and a whole ton of information i have done a video on this so look up the model 1891 carcano rifle detailed development and production history i did a video on this book alone now what's the value in that well say we have this carcano rifle this is a uh, 38 troop special version 
Now I'm looking at it, of course some jackass went and sanded the stock in that. Just about took the stamping off. And more on that one. I'm going to have some more videos. But from the serial number and checking this, this gun supposedly was made by Beretta in 1943. And 44 all production stopped. Because the Americans were pretty much in Italy and the war was going on. And Italy divided up with all kinds of groups and things got out of control as the war progressed. So, from the number, serial number, Beretta, 1943. Uh, but, the uh, fascist markings has gone, the Beretta thing is gone. You can see where there was something on there. It looks like it's been ground off and then re-stamped or something and then refinished. The Italians did use these guns, okay, for a period of time uh, after the war. And then as the Italian army adopted new guns in the 50s, these were still used by the police and kept in reserve all the way up until about the 1970s. So probably that's where this gun comes from. It's been reworked. The fascist stuff was taken off. And could have been in a police arsenal for years. Okay, then sold a surplus and then they didn't like the grimy stock, so the guy cleaned it up. But I know that. I know the markings and it makes a difference. This gun... If it was still in its World War II condition with the correct markings in that on this gun, the fascist uh, date, which is in Roman numerals, and, you know, of course, the manufacturer's mark, which has kind of been sterilized. So this gun may have been prepped and reworked to be sold outside of Italy also. This could have been sold to another country. Okay, you don't know. But in its original 1943 condition with all the markings on it, it would be worth more money than what this is. This is a post-war rework. And it got civilian buff job on there, which devaluated it. But still a good gun, shoots well. And I knew all of this and can make that conclusion from the information I got from this book and studying it. Another one. Now some of these get expensive. This one here, if you're into star pistols, which basically star made a complete line of mill surplus guns that were uh, kind of a clone of the 1945. This book's really expensive, but if you take the time to read it, and I mean read the whole thing, not only to give serial numbers and everything, it explains a lot of things, a lot of the myths about star pistols that were out there now I understand how it happened and why the quality towards the end when Inner Arms was selling them, there was a lot of issues with functioning in that, and that's all explained in this book. Okay. And plus it gives you production numbers and dates and everything. It tells you how to read the little stamping codes because all them little marks on the pistol tell you a year manufactured for who was manufactured and all that other stuff. So... Very good if you get into star pistols. Now, some other ones. This was another good one. Vetterly Rifles. If you're into them old Vetterlys, uh, very good book. A lot of information. Helps you out. Tells a story. Tells about where they were used also. Because long after they were obsolete, these guns were swapped, traded, and used. And it also talks about Ethiopia and guns used in Ethiopia. He actually shows you some of them old Mausers and that like it's, you know, stuff that is coming in through the different importers. I've found others other than uh, Royal Tiger bringing in these Carcanos and Ethiopian guns. Okay, so it does talk about the Vetterlies in that terms. It does not mention KR-98s in that or the political situation in Ethiopia. But good book if you're into that type of firearm. Very good book. And see, this is not a price guy. This guy went to museums. And I mean, he has actual photographs of some rare stuff. So it's a good thing to go by. So you can tell what's kind of rare and unusual and what's not. Now, another one. These books here are specialized books. And by Paul Scarletta. This one is really great is the Malacher Military Rifles. This covers the straight pole M95. It's a complete story. 
This is an outstanding book. It explains to you exactly everything about it. A lot of photographs. Okay. Really gets into it. Tells you how they were changed and modified over the years. And a lot of good information. If you're in, of course, these were another thing that came in. They flooded the market with these M95 carbines and rifles. But if you want to know and get the information so you know what you're buying, okay, this is a must-have book for the 95. And again, this is a specialized book. It just covers the one type of gun. And here's one for all of us. The Gewehr 88 is a great rifle. I did a whole series of videos using the information out of this same book. So if you disagree with the information in my video, buy the book and write the guy. This is again, Paul Scarletta. He wrote uh, two of these books. And they're very well written. And he talks about shooting in the back of both of these. He talks about shooting the guns. And a lot of stuff in here about the 88s. Okay, really great explanation on what all them stamps mean the s all this clears up a lot of confusion and bs on this gun okay this is how you get information i mean you can have generalized information and one guy and it might be said you know you know enough or you think you know enough and you go out there and you're dealing with collectors and dealers and stuff um and sometimes you know you could be wrong there's a lot of things that all the years of collecting I didn't know about until a few years ago when I bought some of these books. Okay. And you know, like I said, the first mill surplus rifle I bought was an 88 Gewehr. And a lot of stories thought I knew everything about it until I read this book and found out more information. And the book, once you study it, figure it all out, it clears up a lot of stuff. And another thing you have to remember. All the reference books and resources in the world, these guns are old. They were passed around, they were sold, they were used by different people. There's modifications that are non-standard and will not be found in the standard catalog or what, you know, Germany used. Um, there's actually, in Turkey, they shortened the Gewehr 88 into a carbine actually re-welded the tube. It's some bizarre thing. I've never found a reference of it. They came in when all them guns come out of Turkey. I've seen two or three examples, tried to bid on them, but could never get them at a reasonable price. Um, so there will be odd things that are not going to be in any of these books. And that's just the fun of collecting. Okay? So... That's my spiel on that and my recommendations. And actually, look these books up or, you know, I kind of recommend getting all of them. And it depends. If you're not going to collect the Gewehr 88 and you're into, uh, you know, Mosin's or uh, Lee Enfield's, then you really don't need to buy this book. Okay. But, like I said, there are books I don't have on those different guns. And pick out a book that suits your collecting interest. And study up. Alright, thank you.